In 2018, the fallout of frosts was felt throughout WA Central and Southern production zones, South Australia's Mid-North and Mallee, and Southern New South Wales. Early sown canola and cereals were hit hardest, highlighting the ongoing importance of management strategies, including how to identify signs of frost. Currently, the best indication we have is uh, less than two degrees inside a Stevenson screen is an indication that there might have been a frost. So quite often when you go into a paddock, there's a whole range of symptoms from multiple different frost events, not just one frost event. At Dale, about 100 kilometres east of Perth, the Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development has established a 20 hectare long-term research site and is co-investing with the GRDC to look at agronomic options to manage frost risk in historically frost-prone environments such as this. We're using around five hectares a year for trials, so the, the results are continually released um, at autumn updates um, to grow as an industry. Paddock inspections five to seven days after a frost will reveal the extent of any damage, but you must know what you're looking for because symptoms aren't always apparent. So here you can see uh, we've got healthy plump grains here which are feeling normally uh, and those that have been frosted during the recent frost events. So generally when you go into a paddock where you think there might have been frost damage, you generally have to go through and inspect the different parts of the, of the plant. Clear stem frost and whole head frost damage is normally really visual and easy to check because you can see that from miles away, but if the frost has occurred during stem elongation, so around Z31 to 37, um, you can basically have to go apart and pull apart the leaf sheaths and dissect out to try and find the actual developing head to make sure that's okay. Later on, as we get through to um, head emergence and early flowering, we can quite often see stem damage there, so damage to the actual stem. Crops which are frosted during grain development can be quite challenging to assess, particularly because if you drive past and they will look fine, you actually have to go through and pull apart the glooms um, and actually check that the grain's developing properly, make sure that you don't have any withered up grains and make sure they're actually filling and developing properly. At the moment, these should be like watery ripe and you should get a clear juice come out, but because they're frosted, they're just like paper. Quite often you might not actually know and you might have to tag plants and then come back another week or so later uh, to check to make sure that they are still developing and growing. Assessing oats and barley is similar, although stem damage isn't as common as in wheat. Flowering frost damage is a lot easier to see in barley because you don't generally have to dissect it when you get to mid grain field. You can see the, the grains that are lost, um, but grain frost damage, you basically have to go through and squeeze the grains to make sure they're developing properly. Post frost management options include cutting for hay, adjusting harvester settings for frosted crops, being conscious of greater risk of fires, and testing seed quality prior to seeding. Best practice is a frost strategy prior to the season. Most of the frost management actually occurs in our pre-seeding planning um, and turning planning actually our, our crop type by sowing date um, selections for different parts of the landscape. So trying to basically, you know, consciously manage those areas we know are more frost prone differently. So making sure that we're managing them according to their frost risk. Image analysis from drones is being tested to rapidly identify and map the extent of frost damage. And it's one part of GRDC's push to help improve frost management overall. Yeah, so over the last few years, we've had a couple of PhD students at the University of Western Australia um, looking at um, assessing frost damage and developing more rapid uh, frost damage assessments after a frost. So trying to bring it from, you know, when we have to wait five to seven days to see the visual symptoms of damage, trying to bring that back to, you know, two to three days to actually assess that damage quickly. An easy to use online cereals frost identification guide has been released by DeepHerd with support from GRDC. It's basically a step-by-step -step guide that growers can use to assess crops for stem elongation frost damage, hell head frost damage, stem damage, uh, as well as damage to the reproductive tissue and developing grain. Ben's advice? Be alert but not alarmed in establishing and applying management techniques. Go and assess your crops, have a look, find out where that frost damage is so you can plan you know, the impact it's likely to have on your production for this season. So in those really prone areas, you know, reconsider what enterprises you're running in that part of the system, your time of sowing and cultivar choice for that part of the production system. And then in your less frost prone areas, continue on as usual and try and maximise your production. Mm -hmm.